Euro 380SL versus US 380SL. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So, one of my subscribers took a big leap and purchased a 1984 Euromarket 380SL out of Mobile, Alabama. And so, one of the things that I hear so much from my subscribers is that they seem to have this opinion that the 380SL was not a very fast car, fun car to drive. It was sort of like an emission strangled car that was not really a great car, but the European market 380SL is a totally different car. So what I wanted to do in this video was talk about the differences between US market 380SLs and European market 380SLs so that if you are looking for or have come across a 380, you could understand uh, how, the, how the two cars are going to stack up against each other. So let's begin. In 1980, 80, Mercedes introduced the 380 SL and SLC to the European market. In 1981, they introduced the 380 SL and SLC to the US market. These cars were dramatically improved with a very robust four speed automatic transmission. And US market cars received a 2.65 to 1 rear axle ratio for greater fuel efficiency. Now, Michael Novacek who's one of my subscribers, had told me that the Euro 380 had a 3.27 rear axle. But it seems now that after some research, the Euro 380 came with a 2.47 to 1 rear axle, and the 3.27 to 1 unit seems like it might have been available upon request, although I haven't seen this yet. The 2.47 to 1 ratio is the same ratio that was used in the 560 SL and yielded an impressive 90 miles an hour at 3000 RPM, making the Euro version of the 380 super fuel efficient. In addition, the European 380 SL developed a whopping 205 horsepower from its small 3.8 liter engine. Although this was only 20 horsepower more than an M110 engine in a 280 SL, the Euro 380 SL has great bottom end torque delivery and a free flowing exhaust so that it actually feels and is faster than the 280 SL 5 speed. Slotted nicely between the 500 SL, which is an absolute brute or sledgehammer to drive, and the 280 SL, the 380 SL offers a fuel efficient entry level V8 SL that has not, whose potential has not yet been tapped by the craze for Euro market SLs. Now, US market 380 SLs, to compare them, other than of course the visual effects, had an 8 to 1 compression engine with 155 horsepower. Now this doesn't necessarily mean that they're bad cars. On the contrary, they're very reliable and they are very fuel efficient for a, um, you know, for basically what was an 80s uh, open top convertible. I don't tell anybody not to buy a 380 unless they're looking at an 81 and it's not in the best condition. So, you know, the, the, the truth about the 380 was it actually was a very good car, even, even despite some of its shortcomings. But the Euro 380 SL, since it has fascinating options, it has uh, the same reliability based on what I know, also double road timing chains, and of course, comparable or even better fuel efficiency to the U.S. market cars um, is really the, the 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 winner if you can find one. And um, if you really want a Euro market SL, again, the 380 is a good one to look at. Now, the 380 is not immune from timing chain stretch, and a lot of the cars had aftermarket AC systems installed. So you really want to vet these for quality. But all in all. Uh, if you find a Euro 380 and you purchase it right, you're doing yourself a big favor and you're setting yourself up, hopefully not to lose a stupid amount of money getting one of these cars in order. So, uh, before we close, I want to ask you guys to like, share, and subscribe 
please tap the bell for notifications and please leave an applause below. Now what we're going to do is we're going to answer a question from one of our subscribers that I've gotten uh, through my email. And um, this question comes from Brad Aitken, who has a 420 SEL 1990 and is having some transmission issues. Brad says, approximately one in every 10 cold start drives, the car will neutralize in the third to fourth gear shift. But once the transmission warms up, the 3-4 shift is fine. From there, it will shift cleanly all day long, even with multiple stop start cycles on that day. Now, this misbehavior, according to Brad, is not a flare. It's simply neutral. When it happens, pushing the accelerator sends the tachometer around in the dial after a kilometer or three, it shifts as per normal. So, what I would tell Brad, I don't know exactly what you've done to service the transmission yet, Brad, but I would say that you may want to add a uh, you may want to add a new filter if it hasn't been done and then try adding this compound called Transx to your transmission. Transx is a watery compound that improves the seals inside your transmission so that the uh, so that the drums where the clutch packs are located are ensured to have perfect sealing with no pressure loss. I think that this might be part of your issue, but we can't be 100% sure, so I'm going to try to provide you with a couple of other potential diagnoses. My second one is that the vacuum modulator could be sticking in the lift position. This doesn't mean that the transmission is in neutral. It means that the vacuum modulator is simply not venting enough vacuum. What I would advise for this test is that uh, I, would, I would drive the car with uh, an atmospheric vent in the cabin, then the vacuum line routed down to the vacuum modulator so when it acts up, I could allow atmospheric pressure to equalize the modulator and it could go back to its resting position. Modulators getting stuck are extremely rare, but sometimes the pins behind them can break and cause this problem as well. Last but not least, while it does not seem that you have a major issue with your valve body, you may have some debris or some graphite sitting in it, so you can pull the valve body and pull the plates off the side and clean out the pistons in the valve body. What I don't want you to do is I don't want you to take the whole valve body apart. That would be bad, but these are three things a do-it-yourselfer can do to eliminate this issue. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. Please leave a comment below if you have any input or your own experience with the Euro Market 380 SL, which is sort of like a, uh, you know, a really underappreciated Euro version SL. And we will talk soon. Thank you so much and enjoy your Mercedes.